Hey friends, good morning, it's Danielle and we're down here at my local garden center to pick up some anemones, but I can see it. we have a big problem on our hands because they've placed all of these gorgeous hydrangeas right at the entrance of the garden center and I may not be able to resist picking up a few more. Look at these gorgeous limelight hydrangeas. This looks like limelight prime right next to it. That's really helpful to see those bloom side by side. There's Limelight Prime right next to Limelight. And what's down here? Okay, here's Little Lime. So you know what? I bought three Little Lime this year and they aren't doing very well. In fact, they all pretty much died back and lost all their foliage. But the foliage is making a comeback now and I'm not sure why. But I can't handle this. I can't handle all of these gorgeous hydrangea blooms in one place. Let's see what this one is right next to us. Okay, here we have Bobo in bloom. Oh, these Bobos look really, really good. How much do they want for these? $28.95. Am I going to end up buying hydrangeas instead of anemones today? This almost looks like they got a new shipment of hydrangeas in here. We've got some gorgeous oak leaf hydrangeas. Let's circle around and see what's on the other side. This hydrangea looks really interesting. The bracts are really, really small. This one is called Bloomstruck. Is it just called Bloomstruck? Is that the name? Does anyone have this hydrangea? This is really interesting how small these bracts are. All right, let's attempt to stay on task and head over there to where they have some of the perennials. You can see I was working with my glue gun today, making more pumpkins for the railroad garden. Beautiful berry poppins, winter berry right here. I'm getting excited for Christmas, are you guys? Looks like they have some really nice spirea. Is this some kind of willow here? Let's take a look. Oh no, this is a spirea too. Mellow yellow spirea. Interesting, doesn't that almost look like willow foliage? Beautiful nine barks here. I never feel like nine barks look good in their cans. They just don't look anything like they do in the landscape because they don't have that wonderful arching structure yet. But you can see a little bit of the difference in the foliage here. Here we have ginger wine. There we have summer wine black. Definitely killed one of those one year. More summer wine black. I'm very guilty of burying plants because I love buying lots of plants and then I bury them <laughs> underneath each other. Lots of beautiful evergreens here. Anna's Magic Ball. Hey, I have a question for you guys about Anna's Magic Ball. If you have this, do yours brown out in the winter? I have two of them. They both browned out and then they came back fine, but I wasn't aware that they did that or maybe they just do that here in zone 6B. Here's Fluffy. I've been looking for a few of these, but I haven't been sure where to put them. I can't remember how big they get. Five to 10 feet tall and three to six wide. So that's nice. They're not too wide. And isn't that a gorgeous color? They're in nice big pots. They want $50 for them here. I have to think about where we can add in some of those into the garden. I tend to stay away from junipers because of our apple trees, but I sure do love them. Love that icy blue foliage. So as you can see, it's very hard for me to stay on track when we're at the garden center. Head up here to the perennial section. So sometimes it's hit or miss when you're looking for something specific here because a lot of times they'll put out about six or nine of something and then someone will come in and buy them all which I don't blame someone for buying them all because the prices here are really good. Look at that gorgeous red hookah. That really screams fall, doesn't it? Oh wait, I think I see two left. Jackpot. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Let's see the tag. This one is called Pretty Lady Emily. Hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the mature height on this? It says only 16 inches. So this isn't exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a taller variety, 
but I think I might grab these two, see how they like my garden, and then if they work out, I'll go ahead and buy some more that are taller. It looks like they have some really nice hosta still in stock. They're still really well stocked for it being the end of the season. Tears in heaven. What do you guys think of these hostas that have the skinny foliage? Do you prefer that or do you like the ones with the really big bold leaves? I think I'll grab this Brenner at two while I'm here. I really like how they have this laid out. It's cool to see the snow berries right next to the winter berries and then they've lined this aisle with some beautiful echinacea and look what they've done here in this aisle it really gives you some nice inspiration for mass planting a border that hooker really looks beautiful in front of this berry poppins winterberry it looks like 29.95 for incredible hydrangeas that seems pretty good once again, really love how they have it paired right here with that hookara. Some gorgeous knockout roses here. Do you guys find that the Japanese beetles still do a number on your knockout roses? Please let me know. I would love to have some roses in the garden, but the Japanese beetles are just too prevalent here for me to continue to try to plant them and make them work. Here's that Euonymus I was telling you guys about the other day. Isn't that beautiful? Just such a great evergreen shrub. Here's a proven winner's rose. This one is called Reminiscent Pink. So how did you guys like season two of Growing Florette? I was really touched by that first episode, episode one, where she really talked a lot about roses and she went to that rose collector's house and was propagating her collection to give it new life. It looks like we've got the classic Endless Summer Hydrangea over here. Well, this is going to be dangerous. Hmm, where can I put another little quick fire? So I purchased those two anemones over at Hilltop Acres Nursery, and I had a little bit of time left, so I thought I would travel to a nursery I've never been to. We're over here at Towns Edge Garden Center, and I thought I would just take a look and see if they have any anemones over here. They do have lots of gorgeous pumpkins. Let's see how much they want. $8 for these ones. Aren't these gorgeous? Do you guys prefer bright orange pumpkins? Or do you like muted and pastel shades? I think I like a little bit of everything, but this place looks really beautiful and it's huge. Let's go ahead and go over there to where they have the trees and shrubs. This is so beautiful back here. I can't believe I've never come to this nursery before. Do you know my fountain broke a couple months ago? This is gorgeous. Let me see the price on this. That one is really beautiful, but I was thinking I want something that's a little bit louder than the one I had previously. Oh my goodness, look at this place. This is gorgeous. I'll be sure and put the address to both of these nurseries in the description section. Oh my word, is that beach that they have trained over a trellis? Let's take a look at this. This fountain is gorgeous too. I think this is beach, let me double check. Purple Fountain Beach. Look at that, isn't that inspiring? I'm just gonna have to take this in for a second. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh, how creative is this? A checkers table right on top of a stone with a little bonsai in the center. It looks like there's some laurel in the back. Maybe a weeping beach there. They've got some bonsai over here. Got to look at this for my dad because he's really into bonsai. Let's head inside. It looks like they have some beautiful pumpkin arrangements for sale too. Only $10.99 for this. That's a great deal. This one is also really nice. Love the sound. 
It says this is the two tier Valencia fountain and they want 519 for it. I really like how they have sectioned off this nursery. They seem to have tropicals in this area. And then I see some things for fairy gardens and terrariums over here. And it looks like almost a desert or cactus area lies beyond. I wonder if they have a silver lab figurine for my garden railroad. They usually have golden retrievers, but rarely do they have a silver lab. But this is just so beautiful here. Everything looks so healthy. Got some bird's nest fern right next to that. Silver lady fern. Lemon button fern. That is really quaint. Love that. This fern looks familiar. Kangaroo pawpaw fern. Maybe I'll try some amaryllis and ferns in the same planter this year and see how that works out. Someone suggested that we reuse the bird cups that I got over from the gourd farm the other day and place air plants inside of them. And I thought that was a really great idea. We've got some fall veggies here, kale, lettuces, spinach. Oh my goodness. Look how cute this is. This is exactly what I was thinking for the floral library. I can't believe I've never been to this nursery before, but this is exactly what I was thinking, using raw materials to make this gorgeous deck out front of the floral library. So they do have these fall in love sweetly Japanese anemones from Proven Winners, but it looks like they're all $17.99 which is a little bit more than I would like to pay at this point. So I think I'll just stick with the two that I got over at Hilltop. Lots of beautiful pumpkins with succulents. Oh, and they even have some with dried flowers, just like we sold last year. So many great ideas here. This is definitely the kind of nursery where you can grab a coffee, a garden friend, and just enjoy looking at all the plants together. Gorgeous dianthus here. We're back home now and I'm already loving the addition of these anemones in the garden. I didn't plant them yet, but let me show you where they're going to end up. Also, since we did a garden tour last, a lot of my orange dahlias grown from tubers have started to come into bloom. So I can catch you up on how that looks as well. I guess they bloom just in time for Halloween, so that's really great. All of the singles, oh, here's Grace. All of the singles that you see in the border are the dahlias that we grew from Save Seed. But let's see if I step over into the border here. This one is Bella Barmera, and it's a big orange dinner plate dahlia. I think we also have some American Dawn in this area. Oh, I also made another little fairy house. <laughs> Grace isn't sure what to think about the ladybug train over here, are you, Grace? This one I did with dried ranunculus and dahlias mainly. It feels like a race against time to make these pumpkin fairy houses before they rot away. But I just love this mix here with Cornell bronze finally blooming in the back of the border. I think I have Islander back there, but that one's not even blooming yet. But I really just love the mixture of the seed dahlias and the ball dahlias. But here's where I'm thinking of placing the anemones. So I did have some Rudbeckia here, but you might notice I limbed up my limelight so that you could basically see through to the chair. Because if you go back and watch maybe the July garden tour, basically all of this was covered up. So I basically gave this area some more air, some more sunlight. So it's part sun now. So I'm thinking I'll place the anemones there now and see how that goes. I think I really love it. This is really an unexpected surprise. I wasn't sure where I wanted to place the anemones. I just knew I wanted some anemones for cutting. And I think that looks beautiful in the garden. And hopefully in about a year or two, we'll be able to divide those anemones, spread them around and fill in that area a little bit more. Can you guys see the cardinal up in the tree right now? 
Well, friends, I need to get ready to go out with some friends. So I want to wish you all a wonderful day out there in your gardens. And Grace and I say, we'll see you sometime soon. Right, Grace? Bye, friends.